Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And in this episode, we're going to take a long, hard look at the deep, deep shame shown by the FA. Oh, wait, no, we're not, because they haven't shown any shame whatsoever, but they ought to. In a few months' time, the FA will be packing up its bags, taking all its star players, its staff, its management, and they will be getting on a plane and flying to Qatar to play the World Cup in a country with no football heritage, where they're having to play in the winter because it's so hot they couldn't play in the summer, and in fact it's going to be too hot to play in the winter, where they're having to change the rules of the game because it's an inappropriate place to host a World Cup, where the stadiums have been built on the backs of slave labour and the deaths of many, many construction workers. When the England team steps out onto that pitch, they'll have to be careful not to slip in all the blood. This is an appalling World Cup. This is bribery. This is corruption. We all know this. Set Blatter and his corrupt minions took, well, we'll probably never know how much to host the World Cup in the world's most inappropriate place. And that's not even considering the human rights abuses in Qatar. So why are they doing it? Why aren't they showing contrition and shame? Why aren't they explaining why they're going? Why aren't they refusing to go? There are lots of questions. But let's have a look at this article. We'll see if we can't answer, well, one or two of them. So, this is an exclusive. Amnesty International slam the FA by declaring they are completely lacking in courage over human rights abuses in Qatar ahead of the World Cup. Now, this is Amnesty International. This is a group that goes around looking at human rights all over the world and it's slamming the FA. The FA needs to be asking questions right now. Amnesty International said the FA were running down time on calling out the plight of workers in Qatar. The FA indicated in December England would be briefed on the situation by external speakers. But an ex executive from Human Rights Group said those meetings never happened. Well, of course they would never have happened. Uh, the FA can't be seen to criticise the, uh, the FIFA. Can't be seen to criticise the, uh, the World Cup because it might not get invited back. Despite the human rights fiasco, I don't know another word, the intolerable abuses of human beings for the sake of a game. So, uh, the FA, getting into the article, the FA is completely lacking in courage to speak out against human rights abuses in Qatar and has not set up the briefings for England players, which it promised, Amnesty International declared on Tuesday night. After a sportsman investigation into the scandal of young Nepalese workers who have died while working to prepare Qatar for the World Cup, the Human Rights Group said the governing body was running down time on calling out the plight of workers and didn't want to rock the boat. In fact, what's happened is that the Qatari authorities have brought in basically cheap labour from all over Asia, effectively. Um, and as soon as they've arrived, they've stripped them of their passports so they can't leave whenever they want. So they've taken their passports off them and then they're paying them what in this country, if you were to pay those workers what they're being paid, you'd, as a boss, you'd likely go to jail. Now, football is supposed to be rich. Qatar is supposed to have untold wealth. So why are they abusing these people? Why are they paying them pittance money and working them so hard? that hundreds, we're not talking about the odd accident here, hundreds of men have died making those stadiums whilst unable to stop working because they can't return home to their families because they don't have their passports. Now, when you have a worker who is forced to work and who cannot not work and you're paying him effectively peanuts, that's slavery. That's the Arabs using slavery to build their grand illusion to their heritage of football. So anyway, getting back into the piece. Uh, the FA, which indicated in December that Gareth Southgate's players 
would be briefed on Qatar by external speakers, including Amnesty, claimed that the players had been briefed by Amnesty. But the organisation responded to say that the FA was playing with semantics. They said their understanding is that a briefing of Southgate's players took place merely using Amnesty documents, not actually briefed by Amnesty. We have never been to Wembley, they said, nor anywhere else to provide a briefing to players. They only have to say the word and we'll be there next week, said a senior Amnesty official. Uh, but the, they don't want to. The, the FA don't want the players to know the truth about where they're about to go and play football because they're afraid that some of them will stand up and say, actually, no, I'm going to make a, a, a stand on this and I'm going to say no. And it only takes one brave, one brave man They'll be in the meeting and say, you know what, no. And he stands up and says, I'm out, I'm not going. This is morally wrong, this is ethically wrong. I do not want to be associated with this level of human rights abuse. And up he gets and he walks out. And there'll be 24 others in that room, all looking at each other. And then someone else will just get up, look at the south gate, turn and walk out. Then a third. Then maybe three at once. And the next minute... There'll be a room with all these empty seats and the FA will be going, bugger. And that's why they won't have this meeting because they know that anyone who saw and understood the abuse, the misuse, the deaths, the bloodshed in building this World Cup, this corrupt World Cup, would be sickened and wouldn't go. So they've got to stop the players from knowing what's going on. That's the policy. Peter Frankel, an Amnesty International UK Economic Affairs Programme Director, told Sportsmail, a number of half-promises have been made through the media about human rights groups briefing players, but no request has been made to us or any other organisation. Several meetings between Amnesty and the FA have taken place and there has been contact with the organisation's research team. But, Mr Frankel said... These meetings have not been particularly constructive. It's not in the, that individuals from the FA are not interested, but we feel the FA, as a matter of policy, are reluctant to call out these violations. Of course they are. Of course they are. If the FA called them out, the FA would then be morally obliged not to go. But they can't. They, they, they're so in the pocket of these billionaires, these corrupt billionaires. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to... They don't want to get their snouts out of the gravy train. Screw the workers' rights. Screw the, the families mourning their dead relatives. As long as their big fat piggy noses are in those trough, scrunching up Arab petro dollars. It's a softly, softly approach to avoid sending the wrong message to FIFA. The wrong message to FIFA. What? That slave labour is wrong. That people dying to build stadiums is wrong. That the richest sport in the world isn't taking care of the very people that build it they're saying that's wrong wow that's the wrong message i think fifa's done and we need a new authority but 12 years after the world cup was awarded we would expect them to be much more engaged in human rights abuses ha ha i wouldn't i wouldn't expect anything else snouts in trough lad uh, and they would like them to take a stance like we have found the netherlands norway and denmark fas have done they seem to be completely lacking in courage when it comes to taking any steps. Yeah, they are. They are completely cowards. They don't want to scare the money away. And there he is. He could have dealt with this. He's chosen not to. The England manager, Southgate, has said, It's OK, lads. Ignore all the dead people. Ignore the slavery. Ignore the corruption. Just go and play. Go and kick your ball about for a bit. You're all millionaires. doesn't really matter. Go and kick your little ball. And we'll just ignore the pile of bodies over there. <clears throat> Those aged 25 to 35 form the largest category. We discovered meaningless death certificates issued for young World Cup stadium workers without post-mortems to establish why their health had actually deteriorated so catast uh, catastrophically. Amnesty welcomed our investigation and said football could make a huge difference by wielding its influence now. But FA signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Qatar in 2018 and its Chief Executive Mark Bullingham claimed last year that migrant workers in the World Cup host nation were fully behind the World Cup. That astonished human rights groups. Of course it did. He's lying. 
By contrast, Denmark sponsors will undertake no commercial activity in Qatar during the World Cup and have not got their names on the team's training jersey. The Danish players will wear human rights messages when they train at the tournament. You see, the Danes have got a bit of a spine and a bit of a backbone and are prepared to stand up against this abuse. It's terrible. Liverpool FC elicited details about the death of one of the victims we featured, Rup Chandarumba, when they demanded answers from the Qatar World Cup Supreme Committee before playing in Doha's 2019 Club World Cup. It proved how football can make a difference. Sportsmail put the findings of our investigation to FIFA. We asked if the governing body would take the phony death certificate issue up with Qatar and its Supreme Committee on the basis of what we had written. FIFA said in a statement that it was implementing an unprecedented due diligence process in relation to the protection of workers involved in FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. That to me sounds like an utter line of bovine excrement piled very, very high. There are many other cases beyond those sports males highlighted ones. Sujan Lopchan's family was initially told informally that the 30-year-old insulation worker had died because of alcohol intake when his death certificate stated acute respiratory failure for further investigation. He used to drink, but not that much, said his bewildered brother Ganesh. We have received no compensation for his life except his outstanding salary and allowances. Amnesty and other human rights groups have written collectively to FIFA, uh, sorry, to the FA this week asking them to support the idea of a £350 million FIFA compensation fund for workers and a migrant workers organisation. The FA said last night it was in dialogue with human rights organisations such as Amnesty International and felt from those discussions that there is evidence of substantial progress being made by Qatar in relation to workers' rights. Yeah, when they say substantial progress is being made by Qatar, what they actually mean is, shh, move on, look over there, hey look, quick, hide it under the carpet, because they don't care. They just don't care. Uh, first comment there. Forget human suffering. This is football we're talking about. Yeah. And don't forget that David Beckham is the, uh, the face of this. He's all over that. So uh, it just tells you all you need to know about Beckham, doesn't it? The man who's happily walking over the dead bodies of migrant workers and slaves. Uh, but as long as he's getting paid, that's fine, David. That's fine. Anyway, she'll come up and round off. So come November, when we all sit down, put the telly on, watch the kick-off of the first game, just keep an eye out for all the blood in the corners. Just look for the little skeletons in the framework of the buildings. Just look at all the fear of everyone who's living in Qatar. Fear of their secret police. Fear of breaking their anti-human rights laws. Fear. A state of fear. But hey, they've got money, so that's okay. This is not a good place. These are not good people. And they've been pandered to because of the petrodollars. It stinks, it's corrupt, and it's wrong. I'm not going to watch the World Cup this year. I, I love football. I love watching the big games. But I'm going to make a stance, and I'm going to refuse to watch any game of football that's coming from such an awful place and if we all did that and the sponsors realize that um, they're on the wrong side then hopefully next time there's a World Cup it won't be held in a place that has appalling human rights or that uses slavery to build its stadiums anyway I shall round off there if you like what you hear and see on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications of future output, leave a like, leave a comment, and until next time, stay safe, stay well, stay away from Qatar, and goodbye.